Safety Institute. So very good morning sir. Morning yeah. Uh, that's how it starts your day. Yes. So day begins with a uh, lot of reports from the previous day's occurrences and followed by briefing from the newspapers and the media articles mm -hmm. as in what's happening. Uh, something relevant to the district first, uh, followed by state, national and international issues. Yeah. So and then for, we'll have a quick uh, uh, briefing by the officers in the district will be having a uh, district wide wireless set conference okay where uh, all the officers they brief what's happening in the respective jurisdictions mm. Mm. and then uh, I'll give them necessary instructions if there are any mm. and they will seek any clarifications that they want from my side mm. and followed by uh, my briefing to uh, my superior officers mm. so I just have to call with them and uh, brief them and there is something very really important for the day. Mm. Uh, and then we head out okay. and start our uh, you know, field visits and taking petitions in the office. So that's how it starts. So my briefing will be at around 8.20 in the morning usually. Okay. So before that I have to be prepared on all the kind uh -huh. data and everything for the day. And then it, it runs long. <laughs> the first thing you know, uh, it came on my mind like after being traveling two years and seeing so many bungalows. I think this is the biggest one I have seen as so Yeah, it's, it's a quite nice property that uh, uh, has come up very well over the years. Uh, so the entire area is around 20 acres. 20 acres? Yeah, okay. it's a quite big uh, bungalow that we have here. Uh, contribution of all the pre predecessors. They've turned it into a beautiful place now. Yeah. So it's like uh, this is for any cultural program? Yeah, so usually we have in-house cultural programs or something okay. whenever uh, we have some guests here. Okay. So, um, and, then we, uh, and then we have a nice uh, plantation in the, uh, in the bungalow as well. We've got uh. mango plantation and a lot of in-house uh, you know, organic vegetables that we grow. Uh. So, so you don't need anything else? Like so all outside? the supplies for the house come from you know, the back here. So <laughs> yeah, all the fruits and vegetables, everything we grow in-house. Okay. So, so this is like if you want to walk also? Yeah, like so we have a good walking track of around 400 meters. Ah. Uh, uh, so if at all in the morning, so if you, you want to take a stroll, so that's where I usually do my okay. walking. So everything. can we go? Yeah, sure man. From where we so can we go? We'll, we'll, we'll go from this Okay. Way. Yeah. So tell me something about like your born and brought up, like how the childhood to me. Yeah, so I am from a place called Kalvakurti, it's in uh, Telangana, ah. uh, probably 60 kilometers from Hyderabad. Okay. So that's where I, fit, I was there until for my 8th standard. Just This is Karaknath. You're correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's yeah. true. Uh, so so uh, I finished my you know, uh, schooling in my hometown and I was there until my 8th standard and from my 9th and 10th I moved to Hyderabad city. Mm. You know, and then uh, prepared for the IIT entrance yeah. and got into IIT Bombay. Yeah. Uh, finished 4 years of college in Bombay and then started working for another 4 years in investment banking. Yeah. And then I quit the job 
got into preparation and then got into the services. This is one thing I want to connect. Like you know, and mostly we say IIT guys are one of the studious and you know very silent and always on the studies. Cut to that, you are not a policeman. Mm -hmm. You need to deal with so many things that doesn't fall into that you know silent guy. Yeah. How is it? Yeah, so that's uh, quite a transition as you've told. Uh, so usually in college, uh, not only IIT, but any uh, of the other general college mm. guys who, you know, uh, mm. are into their academics. So yeah. we don't have much exposure with the outside world per se, except okay. from the gadgets or maybe some interest in tech. Huh. Uh, so probably uh, to extend training helps us in, you know, adjusting from that previous civilian to uh, being a policeman who mm. has to deliver things. So, to large extent, the training in the academy uh, prepares us mentally and physically to you know, handle these challenges. That's uh, something I want to go deep into it. Like I never ask these questions to anyone. Just it's, it's you know came on my mind. How you have seen the training changes you? Like we are somewhere. We are guys. You know, we have our own flaws and you know we to enjoy the life and cut to when you become that man, that transition and most probably an IPS officers because your 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 appearance, your appealing, everything will be visible in front of the media, even on the stage, on the high level. How they change you in the training, or how NPA molds you? That's true. So uh, when you enter academy, there will be a Michelangelo statue there. Yeah. So what it shows is that you know you chisel a boy into a man. Mm. So that's what the training does to you know, all the mm. probationers who come to the academy. Mm. So we are put through uh, almost a grueling training of 11 months, mm -hmm. uh, where you're physically tested to the extreme and mentally also you're tested to the extreme, and uh, uh, they polish all those rough ends are being. You know, uh, yeah. chisel, and you, you turn into a, a police officer who uh, you know is going to handle real, real life challenges. Probably, you know, uh, holding a district today, and maybe tomorrow you will have to run the state as well. So, uh, training has many parts in that. Yeah. So, you have, you know. First of all, they try to build your self-confidence because mm. you, unless you are confident about your own abilities, mm. you will not be able to run, you know, mm. a, a district of this size or probably tomorrow, mm. taking up any other further challenges as well. So uh, the self-confidence part it's imbibed in different modules wow. again. So a part of it is again through uh, your own, uh, you know, uh, training uh, in unarmed um, um, combat where your, you know, physical skills are first improved. So the moment you have your body is in your control, so then your automatically your self-confidence starts boosting up and then you'll have a lot of guest lectures coming and then talking to you and explaining their own real life problems and how they have solved those things and then how uh, simulated problems are also thrown to us you know where you will be we will be exposed to certain amount of real life uh, simulated uh, challenges in the academy and then they'll seek how we would have responded in those situations mm -hmm. so seeing those it'll automatically start feeling calm that yes you know i have the thing in me to start you know yeah. functioning and start delivering mm -hmm. and then along with that you, we are exposed to a module called horse riding ah. so that actually you know builds a lot of confidence in your mind because okay. uh, horse actually you know it, it makes out whether you are you know your two minds or whether you are actually confident about what you're doing so they just brief it more. Yeah. Like so they, they say that you know horse riding is yeah. more like running a particular district or a state. Okay. So where you have you know the general tendency of any system is to disintegrate. You know okay. it want to move this direction. One yeah. somebody want to move this. Yeah. Way. Yeah. It's you, the rider, who has to hold the reins together and make the things in a particular direction. Yeah. So that actually comes you know when when you ride a horse, then you will know that if you are not confident enough and if you are shaky, the horse picks it up and then it just you know either throws you off the you know off itself or they'll probably run in different direction but you have to hold it you know strongly firmly and tell the horse that you are the boss so that's sort our of training actually you know gives you a lot of confidence and it teaches you all those you know small minute skills which you need to have when you are running uh, a district or probably a state hmm. in the future hmm. and uh, along with that all these etiquettes of you know when you're talking to the press or when you're, when you're talking to a uh, set of people who have to be address so all those things are again taught in the academy on you know, mm -hmm. how to handle press or how do you you know handle a stressful situation where mm -hmm. you are facing a mob of let's say you know, thousand people with mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, weapons and everything and then your uh, you know uh, the theory of short arms and the firing practice mm -hmm. so all these things followed by meditation and yoga so uh, different different modules which you know put us in a very good uh, shape by the time we are done with the training so when you see yourself right now, uh, and the 15 years back, how policing have changed you mentally? 
Uh, so uh, I'll tell you a story where I actually was also at the receiving end of police, as in the dreaded thing that all of us we face that okay. thane mein jaate hai. Uh-huh. So the rude behavior that we used to you know expect in the past, uh-huh. jo movies mein dekhte hai, mm-hmm. right? So I was also a victim of that, honestly speaking, because when I was in, in fact, when I was preparing for the UPSC itself, mm-hmm. so I wanted to, I have actually lost my 10th class certificate, so I wanted to get a new set of certificates where I had to go to police station to lodge a, lodge a complaint that you know I've lost uh, these items. This was all. in Delhi. No, this this was Hyderabad actually because okay. I've lost them in Hyderabad. Okay. So, but then yes, uh, back then I actually was intimidated, mm. you know, going to the police station and mm. lodging a complaint. Um, so, all the experiences have actually, you know, taught me as to what I should be improving in the system as well. Mm. So, um, I feel over the years also with uh, the demand from citizenry, you know, mm. in terms of because of the media, especially social media, the exposure mm. that has come. So, the demand from citizens is enormous in okay. terms of responsible policing, uh, more friendly face of policing and more accommodative type of policing okay. rather than the uh, the wrong type of policing that we used to see in the past uh, the, the rude and uh, you know, ferocious type of attitude could change karna hai. so that actually has impacted to a large extent because today a policeman who behaves rudely with a uh, citizen that is immediately taken put up on social media and then you, you, it's, it's all over the place so I think a lot of pressure from citizens have actually transformed the organization also in terms of how we interact with citizens and we are trying to uh, bring down the interface also uh, because the more and more you have the interface with the physical person uh, uh, the more chances are there where you know they, these such kind of incidents might occur mm-hmm. so we're trying to put everything on technology uh-huh. so like for example today we have a police seva app okay so almost around uh, 80 odd services that mm-hmm. you want for example if you've lost your certificate you don't go to a police station you can download the app and through that you can lodge a uh, complaint statement that you've lost your uh, certificate so similar such uh, um, initiatives where you are trying to bring down the interface and try to put technology everywhere and try to make accountable because one of the major problems that we all used to have you know back then was you know accountability of police in terms of how you are dealing with a particular situation how you're dealing with petitions who are coming to the station in terms of dealing with how you are dealing with accused also a person who is also accused how you're dealing with them as well so a lot of it has uh, been now you know accountability is uh, fixed up on the person who is uh, uh, you know responsible for this and then uh, that automatically actually has transformed to a large extent in how policing happens so now today uh, a common citizen has no fear hmm. of coming uh, to the police station or speaking to a policeman hmm. uh, but yes the person who is a criminal who is hmm. an accused yes he has to fear police yeah. so, inside, so this is the biggest actually but almost 10-15 uh, acres is a regular affair so wherever you go you'll find very palacious spacious houses okay so basically this is a British uh, legacy, so Achha. this district and this place, this district was formed in 1923 huh. and 1923 say, you know, officers, British officers, you know, 1923, they were, correct. My goodness. So, tab se, you know, things have been running here. Huh. So because huh. this being a very old district and uh, has been here from, you know, uh, almost 1923. Huh. So back then, you know, officers from the Indian police and the Indian civil service, ICS officers huh. used to be called. So they used to have uh, really big houses and all those hmm. you know, imposing European you know, architecture okay. buildings and everything. So you know, that's how this has come up. Because the latest uh, districts that are being formed, hmm. they, they don't get such big houses because okay. the land has become very uh, yeah. scarce okay. now and it's become yeah. very expensive also. This, this, while talking about the last question, you know, mm-hmm. you, you said about a very good thing that you, you were talking about community policing and connecting to that you said about social media. So if we talk about this, you know, millennials, our generations yeah. of this uh, kids, nobody watches TV, neither they watches news, even not even the mainstream medias. I have seen of my, my years people and also younger than me. They always tell their parents that you are watching what you are watching all day. Nobody watches that. Okay. Uh, we get only the information might be from Instagram or some of the meme pages right now. How do you think about that? Because you were uh, saying that you know police need to be friendly and you know community wise. But somewhere I feel that uh, there are many departments it it's say that it's better you hide out. You know, not hide out, don't come in the media mostly. But to get the, you know, to come in front of the youth, do you think that more officers should come and, you know, they at least say that, yeah, we are also doing the good works? Because the ba- bad things or 
anything wrong that has been branded in a big way rather than the good thing, good works of the police. I think that. So, what's your take on that? Uh, true. Uh, so, as you've told, I think engaging with public and citizens is very important mm -hmm. because unless your point of view is communicated, because say, so, you know, day, what are we here for? So, mm -hmm. the government servant and the government machinery and uh -huh. everything is here. Uh -huh. uh, to deliver services to people and earn their trust okay. and confidence, right? We are here to serve the public at large. So, my personal opinion, I think uh, we should not shy away from speaking to public. Mm. We should not shy away from communicating to what's happening. But mm. again, there should be a thin line that it should not be in the terms of you know self propaganda where everybody is speaking what they feel like speaking. No, uh -huh. uh, you have dedicated you know teams in every department who will communicate, but they have to communicate well and properly because unless, as you've told, that uh, the mainstream media is not reached or uh, it, it doesn't connect at, you know with uh -huh. the youngsters who are you know the mini is talking about they are mostly on social media mm -hmm. so all the organizations now we have social media presence so mm -hmm. we also have a game similar where you know, you want to communicate to the citizens uh -huh. at large uh -huh. so we also have some content mm -hmm. the good work done by the police mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, the interesting done work done by the police we try to communicate it through the social media platforms and try to engage and in fact we also receive complaints from mm -hmm. uh, citizens through social media also because okay. on our web pages social media pages uh -huh. if there is any a grievance that they have so they can straight away communicate to me mm -hmm. or you know to my handle which okay. is SP Chitur handle or through the you know district, uh, AP, handles, AP district handles and they, through AP police uh -huh. uh, you know state handle also so uh -huh. there are uh, different ways through which you know you can actually engage and communicate uh -huh. so I think it is necessary uh, in this new age where you know unless you communicate uh, you tell people what you're doing, the good work. Mm, I think the bad word spreads like wildfire, whereas you know, mm. probably the good work will follow you like a snail. Uh -huh. So that we can't afford to do it in an age you know, where you have to you know, things change you know, in a click of a second. Mm. So I think uh, engagement is necessary. So in that way, uh, when like uh, you see you have a group of people like who are senior than you, okay, when you need to make them understand like right like now, you know, the policing is big. A different everybody there's no need to keep your fear of that your weapon or that lati little bit take savvy and understand that mindset and when you need to make your people understand who are more the age of 50s how you deal with them that's a very good point because this is the challenge that the organization is facing right now so uh, the problem is you know the one uh, the higher ups, okay, they are, um, you know, they are very well read. They are all type officers, all said and done. They are very well read. They keep in touch with what's happening. Uh, they understand the sensibilities of the new age, and they try to orient the organization to the senior managers of the organization. And again, uh, transforming the ones at the, you know, in the, in the bottom of the hierarchy also. That is a bigger challenge because they are the ones who are in touch with the citizen. Exactly. So you know, they are, that's the face of the police actually. Yeah. It's not me who interacts with public. The one on the road, the yeah. constable you see, or the constable in the police station. Yeah. So he's the guy who talks to the common public. So as you've told, the gone are the days of you know lati PTCT. Yeah. That's what they yeah. say. You know, whistling and using the lati and then hitting people. That is gone now. It, it, it's no more in vogue. Yeah. It, it's, it's all about now. You know, a policeman holding a gag belt. You know, trying to take down a complaint and then you know immediately issuing an FIR and then straight away acting on the complaint and then delivering the service so this is the shift we are all you know striving real hard you know trying to uh, push this technological change to the organizations uh, because as we move further you know when we are talking about machine learning and artificial intelligence systems which are trying to you know encompass all of us we as an organization can't be you know immune from these changes mm -hmm. we will become irrelevant over a period of time unless you adapt these changes so how are we going to do this? Uh, yes, number one, capacity building where you know we, we are trying to have as many training programs as possible. So that's one part of it. But along with training, so what we usually do is you know whatever change uh, we notice in the in the society that's coming up. So we immediately try to come up with an initiative and push it to the organization because only when our men you know meddle with this uh, new uh, change that we do in the organization, then only they'll be able to learn and keep pace with it, and then you know engage with public. So, for, for instance, I can tell you, uh, so initially we never used to have this concept of body-worn cameras in the, in, in the, in the okay. country, but uh. now at least in both the states, Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. So, we invariably, whenever a constable is on the road, when he is talking to a citizen in the police station also, he wears a body-worn camera because whatever you speak and whatever he speaks is recorded. The moment that is there, so the person who is speaking also will mm. speak yeah. responsibly. And the one in uniform also, he also speaks responsibly because it's all getting recorded. Mm. And similarly, so we, we encourage, you know, uh, the police officers on the field to you know, have less uh, interface in terms of, let us say, the main problem that most of us face is, you know, a traffic constable st stopping your vehicle on the road 
and asking you for money. Mm-hmm. That used to be a problem. I remember even even I paid when like probably 15 years back mm-hmm. because um, I was not having a helmet and I was stopped and then okay, I would pay the chalan. But then you know there might be demands which are not even mm-hmm. you know legal. I'm talking about you know, corruption or bribing. So now that is all gone. So what the traffic constable does on the road, he sees that okay, you are violating a particular traffic mm-hmm. law or traffic regulation. He takes a picture, uploads, and generates an e chalan, and that comes to your mobile phone that okay, you violated so and so. If you want, you can go check on this particular page. So when you log into the page, then you, along with the picture, you know you see that okay, you violated so and so regulation, and this is the penalty for it. Just pay it. So no interaction with the cit- mm-hmm. you know with, with, the, with the citizen and no interaction with the policeman on the field. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's how we're trying to push the technological change to organization and even within the organization also we have a uh, huge focus on uh, technology technology new, new technology which, which we're trying to push through the organization so in on many friends yes we we, we are trying to you know make ourselves uh, mm-hmm. you know tech savvy and uh, trying to keep ourselves abreast with what's happening in in the uh, larger society mm-hmm. do you watch netflix yeah i do uh, what do you watch uh, and not probably i don't binge watch binge watch but okay. uh, there are times when probably i get some time in the evening when uh-huh. i come home a bit late of course so after my supper and i uh-huh. put the kid to sleep and then uh-huh. yeah i'll take some half an hour 40 minutes of time to watch uh-huh. you know something that's interesting so uh, you know as like everybody is fired these days i'm also taking some interest in this crime thriller so and, and yeah so what do you watch recently uh recently uh, but rather than the recent watch i would tell what is the series that i've loved the most uh, narcos okay. was one thing which i oh, actually uh, really love yeah, yeah so i really yeah. love because it has a lot of crime yeah. you know so it actually to a large extent uh, uh, signifies how uh, criminal gangs established over a period of time which are unchecked so even in this district also uh, they used to be gangs and gang wars that used to take place probably 10 years you know uh, ago no, not really, really far off also so people <coughs> you know uh, somebody from a small town mm. you know, trying to flex his muscle and being the messiah for you know majority of the people uh. but then uses crime uh. to you know earn money and grow big and then try to influence politics uh. so that's how the usual uh, dynamics of any you know uh, criminal gangs operate so i feel i felt that you know it was it actually personified how uh, drug cartels and you know mm. criminal gangs used to uh, control you know a, a country mm. so uh, that's what i you know got connected with it in how policemen you know mm. uh, all said and done uh, you be, you be try to infiltrate those gangs mm. and mm. then try to you know um, neutralize them through mm. you know, whatever means we have at our disposal mm. so i felt that it was uh, pretty accurate on you know how how things happen uh like after meeting so many policemen i have uh, conclusion this is my extremely personal conclusion please have to that yeah yeah so uh, i have an scd t issue sir that's okay. the reason i don't okay, sure. yeah so that's uh, please job is somewhere like a job of an actor where i'm giving that example uh every time like now you are at your home you have to take care of your family you know your wife comes your kid come you don't you can't bring the policeman of your side so you have to be that you know kiddish with that cut to you are getting into the office now some murder case happened something happened you need to mold on that thing and there you know 24 hours you know 20 hours now as you are watching this things and when you come back home how you deal that you know that disbalance or balance of you know extreme professional pressure and your core personal pressure yeah it's actually a very relevant uh, question being for uh, not only me for majority of the policemen uh, uh, because uh, for a normal man or normal women also on a day to day basis uh, they would be at max be interacting with close to 5 to 10 people in a day i'm thinking mm. but if you have a maid in the house mm. probably that's an extra your parents mm. probably your colleagues in the office and your, your family that's all you know, not more than that but uh, as a policeman we uh, see the extreme so the darker side of society is uh-huh. something that we keep constantly you know mm-hmm. engage ourselves with mm-hmm. so that definitely takes a lot of toll on uh, our thinking also and it uh, you know stresses us a lot but uh, as you once you come home your family they would want to see you as a person not as a policeman mm-hmm. so that's uh, uh, you juggling too many worlds so uh-huh. there are different worlds in a policeman actually uh-huh. so uh, that's why i keep telling my folks also that uh, 
uh, when I am in my office, so I might be receiving uh, probably a local, you know, very powerful politician mm -hmm. who comes in, who demands certain things from you, uh, certain, you know, uh, uh, services to be de delivered to the people. And then you have to talk to him and then you have to, you know, sort things out with him. And then there will be a hardened criminal, mm -hmm. you know, who would be brought uh, to the police station or who would be brought to your office, mm -hmm. who has to be dealt and who has to be interrogated and from whom you have to you know bring out the truth and then there could be a family you know who come to police station stating that you know a, a man or a woman who come to police station that their, their daughter is being assaulted by the son-in-law you know who mm -hmm. comes to, you know home you know, drunken state and then tries to assault his daughter and there could be a girl who comes to police station saying that she's been you know stalked or being molested by somebody uh, at the same time, uh, in this garb, there will be people who put up faces saying that they are really nice people, innocent people, but they have ulterior motives, you know, like let us say, I, in one of my first cases actually, uh, that's when actually my eye opened mm. to the reality of the world, that I was in my training. On my second day in my, uh, so we all have to do a stint as a sub-inspector, the Thanedar, so as a part of training. So I was sitting in my police station and then the second or third day, one person comes to my office stating that, uh, sir, uh, I am a very innocent uh, person and uh, my land has been encroached by some XYZ person. It is very unfair. I have my all my documents and everything and nobody in the past had helped me. So I want you to you know help me. I, this is the only sole thing that I have. Mm. So out of my you know young blood that boiled that you know system can't be so bad that you know you deprive a person of the property. You no, know, come on, let's go. So I was so agitated, I went to the scene and then I got it inquired and then uh, once I dug deep, then I understood that, you know, how uh, grey things are, it's not white and black, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's all grey, it's always grey, I think it's, now I've come to a conclusion after five what years. What was it? Like, what so the issue was that actually this person was the one who was encroached on somebody else's property oh. and trying to use police force to evict them, so he has created fake documents. Uh, and then when I had gone to the scene to inquire with localites what exactly happened, so the, so the, he had a dispute with uh, another mm. party, uh, but then they were using police as a force to evict them and then go to court saying getting a stay because mm. once you are in position, the court gives a stay order, so then you will be on the land for quite some time. Uh. So that's the game they were playing, but I didn't know it initially when I saw it. So then I understood and probably five years down the line, I think there is no black and white in this world, it's always grey. So. <laughs> Uh, so you get so suspicious yeah. looking at anything yeah. that, and then it's, it's also good that sometimes I feel because if you are uh, only thinking in terms of black and white and if you think that people are really bad, you know, mm -hmm. bad guys doing bad things, but no, there will be certain amount of, you know, grey in them as well. Mm -hmm. So people who look very good on face, they will be having shades of grey in them as well. So we try to mould ourselves, uh, uh, we over a period of time, initially it will be a bit of a problem mm -hmm. trying to adjust. So like let us say when I'm having a meal, I get a call about uh, a burglary happening or a murder that takes place. So yes, I'm talking to my, I'm playing with my kid, I'm you know taking the call and answering them. So your mind gets tuned to this and that's the beauty of policing. You know, you get to live so many lives in one single life of mine. So I live a life of a father, I live a life of a husband, I live the life of a you know protector, the uh. public, I live a life of a brother who comes to my office, you know, seeking help in the form of brother. So, uh, th that's the beauty of the job, man. You said about the beauty, so it said in every beauty there is a beast hiding. I want to cut in, you know, get connected into that. When you are alone, you are alone, you know, you know the world is grey, there is no black, there is white. But you know, your, your own partner, your parents, they might not understand. Or anybody like, even I am sitting with you, I also might not understand. Only a policeman can understand. Do you have that thing in yourself ki kisko batao? Or bataunga bhi to log samjhenge nahi ki kisse main juj raha hoon. Wo jo point of conflict, you know, mental disturbance, usse kaise handle karte ho? Uh, that's true, uh, Veeam. Actually, uh, I want to protect my family from all the ugliness I see outside. Hmm. You know, I don't want to communicate that ghar ke waake, then I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, because they live a life uh, which is like every other citizen lives, right? So you all, you know, all of us, we see nice, beautiful things on television, you know, uh -huh. all the glamorous part of the world, you know, uh -huh. and okay, maybe crime also is glorified on TV, you know, uh -huh. off late. It also looks heroic, but actually the real world crime is bad, you know, uh -huh. there are a lot of bad things that happen in the society, ugly things also, uh, which uh, 
uh, we want to you know uh, um, uh, take care of that uh, clean the, all the dirt but i don't want to bring the dirt home you know uh, so as you said yes there a lot of lot of days they we will be having uh, conflicts uh, in, in in my mind doing what is the right thing to do and probably you will have to the bigger thing than the conflict you know is keeping secrets you okay. know because this is a job where you handle so many secrets right uh -huh. everybody's uh -huh. private lives uh -huh. are you know uh -huh. whoever comes to you you know they come with a, a just like a lawyer you know they they, they come to you, they confide in you and you know the truth mm. but then you know we uh, there is a procedure to it and then you know investigation and conclusion but then there will be lot of layers of truth in it mm -hmm. so all those layers of secrets you know that's what they say everybody says you know handling power is easy but handling secrets is not you know wow. that is so uh, you, uh, it's actually a quite a big challenge on a day to day basis so uh. Uh, initially yes there were sleepless nights initially we were uh, trying to juggle between these uh, you know many worlds that we have put through because i was also a, you know i i have been to college i was working in a private sector uh -huh. i was like everybody else you know having good life enjoying and uh -huh. chilling partying and everything uh -huh. but then now you come to a phase where you know you are in charge of serious things mm -hmm. so i have very few set of close friends with whom i confide so yes as you told i won't share everything with everybody mm -hmm. because the you know obvious risk of you know uh, uh, you being in a responsible position you can't afford to do so so yes most of it stays with me and uh, that, that that's a pay cost you have to pay if if you are you know in charge of uh, a serious you know affairs like uh -huh. what we are doing right now is this something you miss like if you were be a corporate guy then this thing there's no tension of keeping the secrets that is absolutely true i can be myself uh -huh. that's one thing that uh, i miss at times but yeah so uh, probably uh, yeah but when i look myself uh, maybe 5 years back or 10 years back when i was working and when i was studying life was far more simpler mm. uh, far more easy uh, but now it is very very complicated uh, there are so many actors mm. in the system uh, public media mm. political setup your family mm. uh, private organizations courts judiciary mm. there are no so many people who are watching you who for them it's not you it's not rishan it's not beam it's the office that they look at mm. so it will be looked through a critical lens always you are constantly under scrutiny mm. so your behavior your demeanor what you speak what you don't speak the people you hang out with what you eat what you drink mm. you know um, so everything is out open mm. so yes that's uh, quite a big challenge and yes at times i do miss that part mm. but it's okay the the, the you know it, it's always uh, you know uh, Uh, the utility that what keep uh, you know we used to read in our college also you know this plus outweigh than you know minus is way way more mm. than you know uh, what we can perceive so in toto uh, i think i would still do the same thing over and over again you know, i i love this job uh. the most exciting job on the planet uh. i've seen private sector i've uh. seen uh, the political setup also very closely uh. but nothing can come close to what this job can give you mm. like excitement as i told you, you know, the excitement the you know ability to travel so many worlds uh. and do so many things and help so many people in the process uh, that is unmatchable you basically told about one thing that when talking that it's not about rishan it's about the office it's about the sp ship so that's something you are talking about recognitions okay i will say two side of a coin which i have recently visualized that uh, i hope nobody takes me in a wrong way the glamour all the youths or other people seeing being an ips officer such a big bungalow you know too many gunmen cars vehicles and whatsoever the glamour cut to i also see one <clears throat> few senior most officers got retired and just the day prior you were having four guys working with you just 12 hours that you have no one everything shuts down do you sometimes think about what will happen if the retirement yeah the, what you uh, told is true abeem that uh, because working for so long in government we take things for granted hmm. so this life whatever i'm seeing right now uh, so probably i if if i take it too much close to my heart yes as you've told me that you know over a period of time yeah i feel that it is part of me and then right. once all of a sudden it's stuck it's, it's cut off then i will be in a sort of shock then what's happening so i'm more or less i am actually prepared for it because what is one thing that uh, probably differentiated me was i work in private sector i know how life is mm. without all the paraphernalia we have mm. right now 
So I'm more or less prepared mentally that tomorrow, let us say, you know, if if I'm if I don't want to continue the service also, mm. I know how the life will be on the other side of the uh, mm-hmm. sector. But yes, definitely, uh, it might take some time to adjust to the new reality. Mm. Uh, but I am always prepared because uh, this particular uh, position as a district SP, you you have certain amount of paraphernalia, certain amount of challenges, responsibilities, the recognition more importantly than anything else. In a different role, might not be this much, right? So, I am prepared from, for it from day one, you know, it's, it's okay, uh, because uh, not always you will be in a place where you will only be getting recognition. There will be times when you will have to work behind the screens, there will be times when you have to keep very, very low profile. Mm. There will be times when you will have to do jobs which you don't like also. Okay. You you have to do it, but you have to do it. It's a job, you know. You you've taken it up, and you have to do it. Does that bother you? Uh, not really, actually, because uh, uh, I feel that you know everybody should get a chance. Okay. You know, I don't own this, right? Uh-huh. So yes, I worked hard for this particular uh, you know life that I am right now living. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yes, uh, there are others who are also aspiring for it. Everybody should get a fair chance. Mm-hmm. My turn will come. Yes, I live the life and then I move on to the next phase. Mm. Uh, the new guy will come, let them also lead this life and then you know, because we've all worked hard for the same examination, mm. we've all put in the same number of hours and we are part of any police service, so everybody should get a fair chance. Is it so easy the way you are saying? Uh, it might pinch a bit but it's okay because uh, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I have a lot of other avocations apart from being a policeman. Mm. So I, I, I have art in, in, you know, I have interest in arts, in music, mm. in poetry, uh, and then I have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, friends outside of mm. job also, mm. whom I can engage with, you know, talk about businesses, technology. So I don't see it's going to impact me too much. It would have impacted me if this is the only sole thing that I think about it in a day, and this is the only life I imagine all my life. Mm. Yes, that's a problem. But I have so many different interests and navigations that even if this is not there, I have several other things to pursue. So I will still be a happy, contented man. You you said about art. So you know, like uh, for many people, like you are one of the IPS officers, so they will idolize you mostly if somebody is an UPSC aspirant. Mm. But for me, I got connected to you mostly today morning. The reason behind when I saw the guitar in your in your camp yeah. office, so it's like the the the, the you know what to say that uh, musician in me is like, oh man, now I need to you know yeah. dip down into you like you know how you how you think how is like because I feel like being a musician and being a policeman it's totally you know there's no bridge in between. Like as we played, you know, minor chords, major mm-hmm. chords. Sometimes mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. when you play simultaneously, you, you need to put an interlude or a bridge. Yeah, that's what I think. In, in the two things you are also doing. True. So, I'm quite curious. Like, how how do you balance this? So uh, I'll just go back to your previous question when you said, how do you unwind yourself? Uh-huh. You know, how do you come out of the world that you see outside, and how do you, you know, be a normal person when you come into the house? Uh-huh. So music is one thing which actually. Uh, helps me a lot in you know uh, unwinding myself so it's been very close to my heart and poetry also literature I love reading literature so yes uh, guitar has been uh, close to my heart we, I play whenever I try to get some time so I used to play it often initially but now with the schedule it's becoming mm. a little difficult but nevertheless I try to take out whatever time it's, it's possible you know and I try to play some you know melodies once in a while I try to learn some new mm. uh, new chords and new songs so that it keeps me fresh and mm. lively and I'll, I'll feel good because I'll, I'll tell you, you know, uh, when I used to look at this life probably five years earlier when I was preparing for the exam I used to think this is a dream life you know okay. this is the life that I would want to live and I only used to think that it is always glamorous but mm. no there are a lot of days when you will be dull days dim days depressing days it will be exciting but you will be put through pressure right so now I see that you know you should, one should have some hobby so I never really understood why UPSC may, uh, they used to insist on you should have hobbies and there used to be questions mm. specifically on hobbies. I never used to understand mm. back then, you know, during the interview preparation also. But now when I see, unless you have a serious hobby where you will forget the world and just immerse into it and mm. then come out of it fresh, mm. I think that keeps you, uh, uh, you, you, your mind, your thoughts intact. So music has been one solace where I take, you know, uh, some rest and mm. then you know, try to unwind myself, come out of it and then again, you know, be back and like a normal guy. Uh, recently, sir, while talking, as you talk, about, it was talking about the aspirants. Recently, uh, you know, when when I get the opportunity to talk with many of the aspirants, I feel that they are just too much on the goal oriented. Like they are just thinking to crack the exam, rather than they're not enjoying the journeys. Like I get, you know, DMs of you know, guys of class eight. He, you know, 
I want to crack UPSC. Please guide me. I'm like, be your friend. Just enjoy at least class 12. UPSC. Don't. I am not someone to guide anybody. But then also like the life is. You never know when your destiny takes you. Hana. What do you think of them? Like, is are you someone who was too goal oriented when you were preparing, or you you, you were enjoying the journey? Um, honestly, we, I think all of us, uh, when we take up this path of civil services, uh, yes, uh, reaching the goal would be the ultimate thing because all of a sudden it's a very, very competitive examination. So that's what I used to tell myself, you know, it's like a, uh, probably running a race mm. where you have to outbeat your competitor. Uh, and when your competitor is putting, let's say, 15 hours a day, so how exactly are you going to outbid this person? Mm. So either in terms of other skills that you acquire or you put in more number of hours. So because uh, as long as you know you, uh, your goal inspires you and uh, unless you actually put in the required amount of effort to reach that goal, uh, um, taking interest in other things might not be a luxury mm. you might have in that particular phase. But probably 8th and 12th is too early to get into these things. Maybe when you decide to get uh, and give the examination. Yes, I think this examination asks for it. Not that you would want to do it, but yes, the examination demands that that be the only thing. Because I used to remember, you know, we all used to, all my friends, in fact, thankfully, a lot of my friends also got into services. Mm. So, somebody's in my neighboring district also. Uh, uh. So, so, you're like batchmates? Yeah, batchmates. Okay, and we okay. prepared together also, in fact. Okay, so, okay. from daily times. So, I am one of my friends is a collector in Telangana uh. and uh, one is SP in Tamil Nadu. In Karnataka also, so friendship got, still exists. Yeah, it, it's still so we we so that's what uh, uh, we are friends without these you know whatever uh, the three-letter word we uh, you know uh, the, the you know beside our name we uh, were friends even before that we are friends even now also. Maybe the reason you both know what is the you know advantage and disadvantage of this three-letter word. Correct, correct. So we we all relate to it. We, uh, we know how life was before. So how we all used to sit together in uh, Old Rajendra Nagar in Delhi, uh, you know, having a cup of tea uh, or eating some you know poha, uh, you know, agarwal sweets and something, and then you know. Still, studying in a small uh, room, you know, crammed up places. We've come from there and now we, we all enjoy this facility or whatever you call it. Uh. So yes, uh, we all relate to it and we, we are very thick friends that way. So we know the in and out of the service. Uh, so yeah, uh, coming going back to your question, yes, uh, breathing that particular goal and you know, it should, uh, it, it had become a part of our lives for the mm. past two, two to three years when we used to prepare so hard. So it does become a part of your life where that is the only thing that you think, you dream, you work hard towards it. But once you are through, then again, life is normal. So, but you, know, you may not actually start preparing from 8th standard, 12th standard, it's too early. You should not waste so much of time also on this. Mm. So maybe I think once you figure out what you want to do in life, probably let's say after your graduation, and then maybe you can start putting in efforts uh, uh, towards the examination. Mm. I won't take much of your time. Last two questions. The second last one is, recently we were discussing that uh, there's a very good initiative happening here in Andhra Pradesh Police that for the female safety, uh, if you can just describe it more for the audience. So, uh, women's safety has been a uh, very core uh, uh, agenda of the government and the department also. So, uh, we've had, uh, you know, Nirbhaya in 2000, uh, I think, 11 and followed by uh, Disha incident in Hyderabad city. Uh, so, government has taken it up very seriously that women's security and safety will be a very primary uh, objective of the government. So, on which they have launched something called Disha initiative. Uh, so, through which uh, there are a lot of things that are being put up under it. So one is a Disha app where any uh, woman who is in distress, so they need not call the police uh, for help. They can just, you know, uh, use the SOS button on the app and then it records a 10 seconds video on what's happening or they can just shake the mobile, you know, five or six times and then the call will go to the uh, Disha control and any nearest mobile or nearest police guy, whoever is close by, they will immediately come to the scene and they'll come to your rescue. Okay. That's one part of it. And there are other parts of it in terms of capacity building in policing also to deal with these crimes against women. So most of the problems that we see is, you know, the general uh, uh, notion is that, you know, uh, the punishment for a crime that I do, I see it maybe 10 years later. By then they must have forgotten it also. Mm. The society must have forgotten. Mm. So unless you punish the criminals swiftly, Mm. And uh, in punishment in terms of, you know, the act not sending them a judicial remand for 15 days and then they come out and mm. then they live, you know, the real punishment for a particular crime, you know, mm. those 20 years or life imprisonment for mm. any mm. sort of those mm. crimes, the heinous crimes I'm talking about. That's when the society will understand that, you know, this is an area where I should not get into. 
you know the guys will understand that this is an area where i should not venture into so to that end yes we are investing uh, significantly in training uh, police officers on understanding the crimes against women in terms of investigation in terms of getting higher conviction this one talking about you convict the person whoever indulges in the crime against women so building on that initiative in our district also we have taken up uh, uh, another initiative called patigadapaku mahila police where for every household we are trying to reach out uh, so because in, in with so much of technology social media and everywhere else but even now people don't come out and report mm. so we are trying to increase the reporting of those cases mm. so in our state we have somebody called uh, grama mahila samrakshana karyadarshi she is called gmsk so more or less like a women police officer in a village Mm. so no, they won't stay in the police station they will be in your village there is a uh, gram sachivalayam village secretariat she will be sitting in the secretariat so any issue locally they can go and report to her so what we have done is we have taken this uh, initiative and uh, we have made sure that this gmsk mm. reaches out to every household they go to every village mm. go sit with them explain them about their rights and uh, explain them about the protections that the law gives them and take out their information and ask them if at all you know they are facing any unreported crime if they are facing any domestic violence or if there is area where they feel unsafe to walk or if uh, they see some you know romeos roaming in the roads and you know trying to cause some disturbance or trying to uh, you know harass any uh, you know kid going to school or uh, women going to office so we try to collect all this data and uh, we have a uh, Uh, database of all this and then it's monitored by me by the sdpo by the additional sps and everybody and then we act upon it mm. and then a uh, call goes to the same household whether they have been covered and whether their grievances had been addressed or not so that's how we are trying to reach out to as many people as possible so as on yesterday i think we have uh, reached close to 60000 households in the, in, the, in the district where uh, these women uh, have been able to go to those households get their information and as a part of this we try to focus more on those uh, you know uh, girl child who are in a, a sort of broken household where single parent mm. or you know where there are both the parents are away from the home or um, they must have lost a parent because these are the kids who are usually vulnerable mm. so the guys usually they prey on these kids who are not in a proper uh, care and protection so these when our folks go to these households they map these girl kids that you know okay, this is a kid there is a kid here mm. who seems to be in bit of uh, not a proper care and uh, support atmosphere so that is a priority uh, mm. case for me so i would want my gmsk to continuously engage with the kid mm. and understand what's going on in her life whom is she talking to whom is she you know sharing things with so that she wouldn't become a victim of crime later on mm. so th- that's how we've designed a system mm. so i'll i'll show you around you know uh, yeah. uh, during the part of the day and how we monitor such cases uh, so th- that's that's one of the uh, initiative which is close to my heart also because i've got two sisters uh, so i know how it feels you know mm. when you're being stalked or when somebody is trying to bully you so i i want to make sure that nobody else i would you know uh, be put through that problem and that trouble Mm. we're talking about mapping that was my last question that i was getting into so just few days back i was watching a documentary uh, so us police has started a new initiative where they teaches you about physical mapping or appearance mapping so they teach you you know just when a person coming to your office you study him the appearance he you know the fingers is moving the way you is looking how much time is blinking and they are connecting it to the criminology So do you, do you, do you do that in a personal level when you need to meet so many people uh actually uh, this is one area in criminology as you told about you know how appearances and linking them with crime mm. so uh yes definitely body language is something that we all would want to uh, you know use as a clue mm. to understand if a person is prone to a crime for example uh there is a crime and you pick up somebody right so there are no you know clues readily available so what do you do you try to see read their body language you ask them cross question and see how they are answering whether it's consistent or whether they are actually fumbling and when they are giving weak replies uh-huh. so that's where you pick up some you know cues and then you try to build on it so invariably i think most of us uh, humans in general i think we are uh, you know prone to pick up those clues and more so policemen because uh-huh. we, we have to deal with every day uh-huh. so yes definitely we take uh, this you know um, not uh mapping per se but yes those cues uh, part of your body language to you know to detect crime yes we, we do take it up sometimes 
Not about crime, but what what you have detected, you know, last two days after my my appearance and what was your <laughs> feedback? <laughs> oh, you, you were a kick ass guy. Yeah, so huh. Had a great time chatting with you. Huh. Uh, yes, I think uh, Reem, you, you, you've uh, come from the place where you've come from, from Kolkata and then on to Punjab and then, you know, being in the industry, what you're doing. It's really a, a great achievement and I'm very happy to have associated with you for this particular uh, program. And I think uh, you, you've got a lot of potential in you to go places, you know, in terms of music and sound and other things. And I want you to take this up more seriously, do more, uh, you cover more content, you know, yeah. and make sure that you release at least close to 10 to 15 videos, you know, per week. Hope so. Yeah, so that way uh, we'll be able to reach more and more people. What, what made you agree to do the podcast about my content? So actually checking your programs on YouTube and seeing whom all you've covered. So mm. I, I understood that, you know, you, you're not some random guy who is trying to you know, market on what's happening. But I felt that there's a certain amount of seriousness in, you know, trying to, you know, let people understand on how uh, officers, be it in the civil or, you know, and other arenas also, what actually runs in their lives and mm. how they deal with certain issues and how uh, communicating our point of view. Mm -hmm. So, because uh, for most of the people outside, they only see me in office or uh, they see me in papers, that's what it is. They don't see that I can be a real person, mm -hmm. you know, that there is a real person who lives in this mm -hmm. uniform also. I have a family at home, uh -huh. you know, I have a home to take care of, I have, you know, office also to take care of. So, I've seen that content, that's when I felt actually that, you know, you are actually somebody who is very really curious and serious about, you know, letting people know about uh, the real lives that policemen and you know other officials lead and how decisions are made so that's what actually made me agree to you know do this program talking about the reality so i'm not leaving you right now we are going to listen something from your guitar sure no i <laughs> uh, will do it probably later yeah thank you